Lounge on LMFM Radio. Let's get straight to the chat. He's Ireland's only hermit priest who's been living in Duleek since 2007. I met him many moons ago on the show and was really impressed by the man, what he stands for and believes in. It really is time for a catch up with Father David Jones. David, it's great to see you again. Good morning, Jared. Thank you very much for joining me once more on the show. It is probably the guts of 10 years. It must be roughly, time. yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask you in that time, you are a hermit priest, and, and this is a big question that, that I had in my mind to put to you when I knew you were coming back here. In that time, look at the way the world of communications and connectivity has changed, David. Mm. Has that presented a huge challenge to you and what you do? It has and it has not. The difference is this. When I was with you before and for a good long time afterwards, I always refused anything to do with internet. And then... One of our congregation in the Mass of Heaven on Sunday, the Latin Mass, uh, wanted to start using the homilies and to put them up. And that meant eventually having to have access to what he was up to. And when it went into uh, a website which he created and then into YouTube, then there's no way I couldn't have access to see what was going on. So I had to have it in the house, but with limited use, basically. So then, but I always refused, and still refused email. I don't want anything to do with email. It's too invasive, and it's very controlled what I have. But it does make a difference, because if you're honest, once you're on the internet, the temptation is to, ooh, ooh, isn't it, in the margin. So that's a temptation. Yes, I can understand that. I take it you're not a Twitter arty or oh, no, no, a Facebook no. person or an uh, Instagram. No, 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 the bishop's patronage, now Michael Smith uh, is retiring and yeah. there's a new man coming in, Thomas Dean, uh -huh. to take over his role. Yeah. Uh, is he just going to take you on board and, and keep this going? Yeah, that is the issue because um, the bishop, actually, Bishop Smith, he's very good to me. He was with me yesterday and we were discussing the whole issue and he has protected me so well. Um, he's been very, very good. He comes every month and he makes sure that i got enough. He looks after me. He doesn't want me to take on anything which is not contemplative. He's clear but kind, a very good man and a caring man and we just hope that the new man will as they say in, in Irish if it's not broken don't fix it okay so you expect things to continue as they are and that patronage is very important that's the second tenant of being a hermit the third is a combination of a few penance what do you mean by penance yeah. what do you do as penance yeah it is actually in canon law quite clearly it's one of the conditions laid down so basically i try not to be less penitential than i would have been in our monastery in practice it boils down to this very little sleep no breakfast normally very little consolation it's fairly austere actually pretty stark if you're honest and the fact that you're not having any let up like television or anything like that is kind of fairly austere but it wouldn't be dramatically austere like that because you've got to look after your health your health is your wealth it certainly is so there's no television in your world no radio nothing like that you don't do you read newspapers magazines anything no like no that? well what happens is that a lady over the road passes me down the irish catholic when she's finished it so i just skim through that and see if there's anything useful to know yeah. yes but yeah. very little besides that that thing you mentioned of very little sleep what time do you rest at at night time go to yeah, bed yeah that's the issue if i were to rest when when I should, there'd be enough, because I've kept the monastic regime of getting up at quarter past three and going to bed at eight o'clock. But the problem is that people don't quite realise you've got to do that and they might be wanting you still at that hour. It's not easy because you're living very close to the people if they want you, if they come for confession, what do you do? do you... That's the issue, that if they leave you in peace, you've got enough sleep. But if not, I always get up at quarter past three. That never changes hardly. So 3.15 Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That's the issue where sleep comes in. You, can, you do get quite sleepy if you're not getting those seven hours, yeah. And you rest generally at 8 o'clock. Yeah, if, I can, if, I, if there's no one there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there's no call on yeah, you. Yeah. It's a tough... And that's every day. Pretty well, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's very rare there'd be an exception, yeah. yeah. Is it yeah. tougher in the, with the weather, the bright days, or do you sleep better yeah. in winter time? Uh, it's actually easier when there's light out there because the birds are joining you at the dawn chorus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is beautiful early in the morning for sure. Penance, prayer. How, yeah. how much do you pray? Yeah, that would not change. I've... 
fairly insistent, never ever change the quantity of prayer in a day, because if that starts to go, then everything gets out of order. So that's always the same. The office is fully sung, everything is fully sung, therefore it takes a long time, there are pauses between the psalms and after the readings, the mass is fully sung, and I shouldn't be saying this, but it's the truth. Practically every day I have a second mass because I have to because I have so many intentions. So and they're both sung. So uh, all a lot of the time is spent in chapel and adoration. Lots of adoration. I expose my sacrament at night and also in, in the end of the afternoon. So it's exposed a long time. And this is just you and God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that doesn't change at all. That the structure of the prayer is always the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. No par parish ministry is the final no, yeah, part of this yeah, whole equation. Yeah. You are not associated with a parish. You see people call at times. They call to me, yes. Yeah. Just to yeah. you. In fact, that's, what the, that's one thing the bishop did ask me to do when I was being professed as a, as a hermit in the cathedral. He wanted me to be always available for confession because it's a spot then in the diocese. There's always confession in the hermitage every day. And that's very... Priests come as well. It's a precious thing for the diocese and he appreciates that. Mm. Is confession still something that's important to people of faith? Well, you see, it's not just the actual sacrament that happens, but they unload. And that bit of unloading is very important. You get a person who's willing to take you seriously, that's very important. And are you confided with very personal life changing matters yes oh yeah, oh, yeah. I and mean, the head of a confessor it's pretty full of ultra secret stuff yeah and, and heavy stuff heavy is stuff. that difficult you know because you often hear with counselors where they take in and then they have to try and uh, you know unload themselves mm -hmm. by using other counselors how mm -hmm. do you work that yeah well it, with the years what happens is it's rather like a doctor or a psychologist you sort of cope. You have your coping. You see, you don't engage emotionally at every possible level with every person that comes. You somehow have a system, you have to, of parking it. Um, because all the time, every day, day and night, and texts and letters and all the rest of it coming in. So it's heavy stuff. But you, you, you somehow you get not hardened to it, but you're dealing with tragedy all day. Mm. If you get your coping mechanisms. Mm. So you have that inbuilt coping mechanism yourself. Um, you do say mass, and and you mentioned your own private yeah, masses that yeah. happens where where you live in Dulic, but you do a Latin mass. Is yeah. that once a week? That, yeah, that's the one thing. What happened was that uh, in the beginning. I was only celebrating ever uh, practically in the Hermitage itself, my own little oratory, and then after a few months, a family uh, asked, "Would I celebrate in the old rite on a Sunday morning in my chapel?" And they came with their uh, many children. And then other people heard about it and started coming. So after a while, my thing got too small. I had to have a second order to uh, make one other room into a bigger chapel, and that got too small. Then so I had to have appeal to the bishop, look, we haven't got room, people are coming. So he gave us the use of, you know, the uh, when the nuns were in Stamullen, the visitation convent, well, we had the use of their chapel for about a year, and that got small then. And then the bishop gave us the use of, there's my friend from college days in Rome, Father Michael Carr, we were students together in Rome, we were ordained about the same time, and he became at that time parish priest of Kilbeg, Karlenstown, Staholmug. So he gave us the use of whichever of churches that he had we wanted to use. So we used Staholmug every Sunday for about three years, and that was nice. And then he was moved nearer to me here nearby in Navan, he's in Johnstown. So we followed him, and it works out very well. The difference is this, that whereas before we might now and again alternate, now I do it every time for the reason that he's got the biggest one-man parish in the diocese. It's massive with all these new houses, mm. so I would never impose an extra mass on him, which means the same time, same channel, it's always the same thing, the same priest, uh, fully sung Latin mass in the old right. Now, the thing is, that's the only constant public duty I have and also it's followed by confessions up until about four in the afternoon and that's quite frequented because people know they might even come to confession without going to the mass itself because there's, there's a slot they can always get confession on a Sunday so a lot of people come to that so that's kind of useful ministry as well it's not too distracting actually it's very contemplative you're looking upwards rather than that there's, you see it's quiet people come to that celebration no, no one talks uh, it's kind of very vertical, it's mystical, it's the old ride, and they're very well behaved, lots of children, but they're very respectful, so it doesn't take me out of my ambit. Mm. It's interesting that the growth in numbers yeah. forced you to move, and it is very. Oh, popular, yeah, it's growing. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is growing, yeah. Yeah. which bucks the trend of the mainstream yeah. 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 stream church and yeah. the conventional rite yeah. of mass. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Yeah, because we've noticed what's happening is, is people are drifting towards us and coming back. Often, not because they're looking for anything particularly Latin, but because they've been upset by, let's say, it, abuses. 
uh, you go to some celebrations, they're very noisy, the kind of happy clappy. Well, if they've got an interior life and a kind of an awareness of things, they somehow feel we want something more nourishing, less superficial. So they, oh, what's going on here? And this, they come back and their families. We've got lots of big, 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 big families, young children. Yeah. And where does that happen again? Every Sunday? Is Johnstown, it? yeah. One, one o'clock, yeah. The Latin yeah, and yeah. you celebrate yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Are you open to more participants? Or oh yeah, they come. They come. They come. You see, they come for several reasons. It's on the internet. It's advertised. Uh, I'm not sure who advertised. It must be on some website. People know about it through internet because they come there for from the states on the holidays. You see, they come out of the blue, and but then local people from Ireland. But they come from all over the place. Different, way down, might be County Offaly, uh, County Kildare. Uh, Monaghan, County Cavan, uh, you name it, uh, yeah, and sometimes even from the north. Uh, it, it, yeah, they come and see, they're willing to travel because they want, it's not just actually the right, but also the nourishment, because there are lots of things happening in that package. See, the sermon is an event, it's kind of prepared, in, and it, there's something for the children as well, it might be puppets or whatever, but you see, there's a lot going on there, therefore there's an event going on, and, and they feel they're being nourished and cared for. The confessions you see before and after, it's a whole package, and they kind of come back for that. Very, very interesting. Isn't he an interesting man? Father David Jones is with me on Late Lunch and we'll talk more after the break. You're fantastic. I want to ask you about this. Um, you live in Providence. Yeah. Maybe yeah. talk to yeah, me a bit about yeah, that. Because that would be, that yeah, that would be an issue because I mentioned it to the bishop yesterday. Um, it isn't it because uh, um, I've witnessed over the years now, it, for years now, I, I never ever have to buy any food. It's it's always a perpetual miracle. It's unbelievable. It comes yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that incredible? Yeah. And I may, I'm I'm intrigued about that mass. The, the what you say there. I know Louise spoke to you. She's a great journalist. Louise. Yeah. She works with me a couple of days a week. Yeah. Evil in the world. Yeah. This. There's a real evil, is there, yeah, in this yeah, world? Yeah. There is she, Satan is here, is yeah, he? Yeah, she approached that one and I was able to... Yeah, because it's something that I'm interested in yeah, as well. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. I worry about the world. And I know you said to her that you believe the faith remains strong in Ireland. Yet, we've become a very detached people from God, I think. Yeah. I have faith. I believe. Yeah. I was born a Catholic, David. Mm. I don't attend formal Mass because I lost... I lost faith in the form, but I pray to God every mm, day. Mm. I pray to Him. Is that yeah. is that okay? Well, keep the I life. talk to Him. Yeah, keep the life. I mean, what'll happen probably is that from within He'll call you back quietly to to for sacramental life. The thing is, don't lose that link. That's 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 your life. No, yeah. I never yeah. use. Yeah. Yeah. I pray in a format every day. Yeah. Especially, I love to pray when I walk my dog. Yeah. Oh, I pray to God yeah. when I walk yeah. my dog. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. a strange yeah. thing. I have a faith. Yeah. I have a deep yeah. spiritual faith. Yeah. Beyond this mortal existence, yeah, that's the issue. See, that's what Louise was bringing out. There. It's something you can't get away from, and that's when I would get cases that you wouldn't get. See, even priests send them to me because mm. they can't handle certain things, and therefore you get a high concentration of stuff. Well, there is stuff out there, both possession and haunting. Mm. So, mm. if you want to go into that, you can, but it's serious stuff. I know, yeah. We're just made touching it. I want to talk about Satan and, and life beyond this life, really, as such, you know? Mm. Um, because I think that's what people think of. But who am I? Where am I headed? What's this all about? Yeah. And it's a short journey. Yeah. You know? Tell us about it. I'm going to meet a friend's mind that I started work with. I started working in the, in the civil service here now, in the public service, many years ago. And would you believe one of these women are retiring tonight? And I've come that journey, yeah. and here I am at the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It brings it home to you, you know. Yeah. Here we go. Father David Jones is with me on late lunch. He's Ireland's only hermit priest. You live on Providence. Yeah. Will you tell me about that? Yeah, it's amazing actually. It's a perpetual miracle. I never ever have to buy food. It Every day something arrives and not only that but if there's something to be paid for out of the blue the exact sum arrives just at the right time. It's a perpetual miracle. Yeah. It happens? Yeah. Can yeah. you explain it? Yeah, well you see if, I suppose the Lord honours those who try their best to honour him and it's in his interest to protect what is doing that. It, the same thing happens if you look around the Catholic world. Those monasteries that are really sacrificing themselves, trying to do their very best to be faithful in the convents, and say, 
the Lord will send the vocations and things. He blesses what's blessing him. Isn't it interesting to hear you say that? And you look well, and you <laughs> eat well, yeah. and you're 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 very healthy. You're healthy, really yeah, healthy yeah, I have yeah, to say. Yeah. Um, what about this world we live in today, and where it's headed, with all its imperfections, and in this country in particular, where you are now, based for many years, yeah, yeah. the way the faith has fallen away. Yeah. Now you mentioned the Latin rite, bucking yeah. the trend. Yeah. But you've said that you believe the faith remains strong in Ireland. The instinct of faith. Yeah, the instinct of faith. See, what I'm getting at is compared with some cultures, the instinct of faith is massively there, because I know both sides of the story. And it's a, you, there's a big difference between a Catholic country and a country like even, unfortunately, Wales by now. You see, the, there are certain points of reference in Ireland which are still there. People die, people marry, people christen. In other words... People come back to base, back to base. That doesn't happen necessarily elsewhere. And because of that, and the whole school system, where nevertheless they are being taught sort of the Catholic faith, it's still there. Therefore, if you've got the young people and you've got it coming up still, you can't get away from an island. The faith is still there. And people come to me, young people now, lots of them, with problems. And why do they come to me? Well, because the faith is still there deep down. Even though the state has divorced itself from the church and the ethos in schools are changing. Yeah. Well, they're more open to many faiths yeah. than that as well. Yeah. You still believe the Catholic ethos remains? And Compared with other countries. It, yes. Yeah. You see, the whole, it's difficult to explain because you're living in it, but I can see the difference. It's there. But the only thing is, it's less formal than before. But the point is this. If a person is in trouble, what's the first thing you do? He starts to pray. I wouldn't not disagree with you on that one. It really is. It, when crisis hits life, where else do you turn to? What about evil in the world? Yeah. And there is evil yeah. in this world, yeah. and a lot of it, even though they say good prevails in most instances. Is Satan alive and well in your book? <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. And you see, that's part of the issue, that a lot of problems coming to me will be of that nature. And some are sent by other priests who don't know really how stuff out there which kind of needs a certain specialisation. Now, I'll try briefly to explain the two sectors where that would come up big time. One is directly satanic where you've got infestation obsession and possibly even possession the other is spirits therefore they're not demons but human spirits who are not at rest and they can wreak havoc things going bump in the night as we say well they come to me so you see there are certain things which tend to work or at least bring it down a bit and that means in practice going to the place they're seeing delivering, delivering some kind of minor exorcism and if necessary celebrating the, the, the sacred mysteries there to actually invite whatever is it there to go away or be at rest and leave them in peace. It usually has a, a, an effect. Depends how serious it is. But the other one is actually not indifferent either. You've got people coming to you. Usually you can detect it's not possession, but it can be a certain amount of attachment of stuff that's got stuck onto them. And that's happening partly because precisely the faith has been weak and therefore they're open to anything. Because you don't stop believing, you just believe in more. You believe in anything if you stop believing the correct faith. Therefore, New Age, all these bits of other religion coming in there, but they're not just indifferent either. Certain practices invite, by opening chakras, opening the soul, pores, other energies, other eventual spirits to come in there and to get lodged, and that has to be delivered. So you've actually been in the presence of evil. Oh yeah, and I've been and, and rid of evil from people and places. Yes. Yeah. It's a whole. See, there, there are certain things a normal priest is able to do. You can do minor exorcisms and everything that is necessary to free a soul. You have to get the soul in a state of grace by a good confession. Otherwise, there's no point. And then all kinds of things can be helped. But then. With regard to formal major exorcism, you can't do that without the bishop's permission, and you just hand on that to the bishop. You have to; it has to be an exorcist doing that. It's dangerous. But I've been present in exorcism. I know exactly what goes on. It's very noisy. I mean, there's, it, <laughs> the demon is there, or demons, and it's it, 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 it can frighten you. But the thing is that you mustn't get frightened because you're in command. I mean, after all, the demon also is a creature, therefore has to obey and has to obey Christ in the priest because it's the power of Christ coming through there, and he knows it full well. He's a lost uh, creature. A barking dog. But you see, the point is this, there's nothing else that can actually get rid of demons other than the power of the church. And the church, you go to actually, even if you go to places like Latin America, where you've got a lot of stuff going on there, you know that every big shipment of drugs from these places, every big uh, uh, load, it's always 
coming out with a maximum of demonic attachment because they invite somebody who's involved in Satanism to come and to perform a black rite of cursing uh, over each shipload of drugs so as to do the maximum of harm and therefore be most lucrative in bringing back uh, things to whatever it may be. So we know that all these people are therefore involved in anything which comes from any of these shipments is also probably infested with something coming out of there. There's stuff in that person, therefore you've got lots of drugs, you've got lots of demons around. Anyone who's been involved with serious uh, witchcraft, spiritism, Ouija boards, even New Age practices like Reiki or Reiki, all these things, they open doors to the dark side and they're lodged inside. And we, things are going wrong, people don't know why, but we know why. And there's no shortcut, it has to go to a priest and it has to be got rid of, and it's a lengthy process. But with regard to stuff which is directly uh, in possession, there only an exorcist can do that, because that's the hanging demon they head on. We're going to finish shortly our, our interesting conversation today. My God, that really has me sitting up in the chair and listening to you big time. What about beyond this mortal existence? Yeah. You know, and, and the life you lead and how you dedicate yourself to God. Yeah. Where are we headed? What, what's beyond this? I've asked this question on numerous occasions to different mm. priests, to different faiths. What's your take? Yeah. Well, you see, the thing is, you look at any human being, the instinct of the human being is to never stop being. The instinct to continue is there. Even suicide is a hope that there's something better. It's an ending of this state. Now, the thing is, the point is this. Whether we like it or not, once the soul has been sparked, once there is ignition of an immortal soul, that soul can't stop itself ever from existing. Therefore, it's going to go somewhere. Now, our faith teaches that if it's in a state of grace, it eventually will go to glory, what it's made for. But it does also teach the other side, and we can't get away from that. And there is, unfortunately, the risk that if one actually deliberately chooses the other side, refusing always every appeal of grace to the last point, then one is not going to make it, and that has to be said. And therefore the demon wants his bit. Now you look, if you look at, for instance, on any YouTube, a different thing going on before your eyes to the normal, you look at the difference between a conjurer who's doing tricks, that's okay, he's learned very well his tricks, but you look at a magician, you look at a real magician, he's not doing tricks. He's got power, which are preternatural, but they're coming from somewhere. Now, anyone who gets involved with that degree of stuff is also doing it at a price. The price is the immortal soul. And the demon, he comes back for his mortal, for his bit of flesh, his pound of flesh, and he's going to get it, unless that person repents. So we're handling demonic forces who right now are out there. And by the way, old Nick is not short of means of getting in there. The whole plethora of stuff being sold now to little children at an early age, the likes of Harry Potter, is not indifferent. This is not indifferent because they're learning real spells and being told the norm that vampires, the ugly, are the good. So it's a topsy-turvy system and it's an invitation indirectly to make them ready for something worse. And the whole thing of Halloween, it's not indifferent either. There are human sacrifices happening each Halloween. There are people being conceived in satanic rites, never registered, and being offered in immolation to Satan. Now, this is real stuff. Every time it happens, there's an increase of satanic power on earth, and they're around. Now, these demons are what we have to play with. They want our soul, and they're getting it. My word. Uh, you certainly have sparked an interest and a more inquisitive uh, side of me today when I hear what you have to say, Father David. I wish you well. I wish you well with what you do. Good luck to you. And thank you very much for coming in and joining us on the show today. I've really enjoyed our conversation. God bless you, Jerry. You're doing thank good you. work. Thank you.